Hello everyone, it's Raza Von Werder from the University of Mother God Church. I'm talking about my book and reading from it, Theater of Justice, it's about the ministry to purgatory. And now I'm at this, it's the beginning. Uh, okay. Uh... I'm going to talk about the ministry first. The ministry was given to me by God, by Jesus and Mary specifically. Mary has a very active part in purgatorial work, and she appeared to me many years ago to give me my first celebrity in purgatory. She handed him to me as an infant. I did not know who he was until later. It was Errol Flynn. Why was I given the ministry? First, because I pray daily fervently that God would help them. Second, because I practice celibacy. And another gift I had been giving dur during the betrothal with Jesus was that I would have spiritual relationships with men. As far as why a ministry to purgatory, why pray for them, why suffer for them when the mercy of God should be enough? Because it is our sacred duty. When you or I want help, we often seek the intercession of the saints in heaven, do we not? Yes, and they help us. The intercessors for the souls in purgatory are not saints, but we are the living on earth. The church militant, that's what it's called, the church militant. The saints in heaven are called the church triumphant. This is according to the Catholic uh, vocabulary, the way they explain it. So the saints in heaven are the church triumphant, and we on earth are called the church militant. I'm looking at my hairs. I don't, my hairs are driving me crazy. They always do. My hairs drive me crazy. <laughs> Rewards of serving purgatory. Incredibly good karma, profound protection, and answer to prayer. Incredible graces and spiritual light, because this is the greatest charity there is. The urgency of helping purgatorial souls. Many are abandoned, forgotten, and getting no spiritual nourishment except the agonizingly long stretch of pain which is ahead of them. All but forgotten, it seems like hundreds of years. They cry bitterly. I have been given such souls from the arms of our Blessed Lady. They did not want to leave her, but I promised them they would be given back to her, and after I suffered and worked for them, they were. I think I should begin with Errol Flynn because um, I really do. I think I should start with him because he was my first um, here, Errol Flynn. He was born let, let me make a quick calculation here how many years he spent in purgatory. Hold on one second. 1982, take away 15, 59, 23 years, 23 good years in, I mean full years in purgatory he spent. My mother, my wicked mother spent 24 plus years in purgatory, worse than Errol Flynn. <laughs> Whoops, lost my place. When Rosamond Werder, I'm writing here as if it was somebody else, but it's me writing, thought about Errol Flynn, she feared that he might be in hell. How great was her joy when the Blessed Virgin in late 1981 brought her an infant and said, Would you like to take care of this infant? Yes, Raza said. That infant she recognized shortly was none other than Errol Flynn in purgatory. Herein began a three-month intimate ministry to Errol, where Raza suffered for him 
and for her own benefit and was able to communicate with Errol. Not only through nightly dreams, but even in her waking time, on March 7th she heard a voice say, pray, pray, pray. She got on her knees and prayed litanies and other prayers for Errol. At the end of two hours, a tremendous otherworldly feeling came over her. She looked outside her picture window from her sixth floor apartment and saw a flash of golden light ascend from below into the sky. She said, what was that? A voice replied, that was Errol. He has ascended. For a few, that was after months. That was after three months of ministering to him. For a few days, Raza was able to continue speaking with Errol and asked him how we felt before and after the ascension and found out many interesting facts. She kept a daily journal and what went on, which we offer here called The Deliverance of Errol Flynn from Purgatory. The manuscript is within this book. Rasa still hears from Errol when the need arises. <laughs> okay, so that's Errol. Uh, and his, I'm not going to read his whole story now. I'm going to read a little bit about each one. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah, okay. Elvis Presley. Uh, Elvis. Raza had a strong connection with Elvis as a child of 10, 11, and 12 in being madly in love with him. Many years later, in July 1977, he appeared to her as a great mountain of talent. And she was told that she had been connected with him and she was helping and that he was about to ascend into heaven. She does know much about much more than that. But at that time when she compared the time Elvis spent in purgatory to the time El El Errol spent in purgatory, she knew that Elvis had a lot less sins to per pay for. We, we think that you will learn about the inner states of souls when you are aware of the time they spent being cleansed. For many years, Errol Flynn held the record for the longest time in purgatory that Raza was aware of. Now, I know other ministers who have souls that spend 50, 60, 70, 80, even hundreds of years in purgatory. I never had anyone like that. I never... The longest of anyone that ever spent that I ministered to was my first husband, Stanley, and he was in there for 55 years. This record was broken by her mother, who ascended into heaven in 2003 after having spent over 24 years in purgatory. Raza's father, on the other hand, spent only two years and nine months in purgatory. He was a good guy compared to my mother. So Elvis spent, let me see, let me, I should have written it down in the book. Hold on. It's about five years, 19. He went up to heaven April 16, 1982. Wait, wait, I'm doing this wrong. Yeah, it's about five years, like I said. Yeah, okay. So I'm not going to waste time doing this again. I'm just going to... Okay, oh yeah. Oh, it, there's a few pages about Elvis. I'll, I'll do that some other time. I, I'll do that some other time, not today. Okay, here's Frank Sinatra. I helped him. So he died in May 14, 1998, and he ascended into heaven February 8, 2002. Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin were given to Rasa at the same time. The first thing Sinatra said to her was, Can you give me a PJ? Ah, I forgot about that. I completely forgot about that. <laughs> so you see, that's the mental... The mental... Uh, their mindset, you know, where they're at, you know. Okay, I'm going to do this, the next video.
about Frank Sinatra and helping him through purgatory.